Hello, and welcome to the Northfield United Methodist Church. This is the Sunday School Post for the week of November 15. Let's begin with a prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, thank you so much for this time to be together. May your word go out and reach all your children and all the people who hear this. In Jesus' name we pray. So as you remember, we've been talking about Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and now their children, Jacob and Esau, and how God had promised to Abraham that through Abraham, there would be many, many people, as many as the stars in the sky, many generations, and God would have a special covenant, a special promise with Abraham. And so last week, if you remember, um, so Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob and Esau, and Jacob tricked Esau out of the birthright. And this week is actually very similar. It's continuing that trick. So we're going to read the story of the blessing. Remember, he tricked him out of the birthright, and now he wants the blessing. So let's focus over here on this Bible. Before long, the twins grew into men. They were very different. Esau was big and strong. Esau made Isaac very proud because he was a hunter. Jacob was smaller than Esau and very quiet. Rebekah loved that Jacob stayed around home. When Isaac became old and blind, it was time to give his blessing to his oldest son, passing on the leadership of the family. Since Isaac couldn't see, he rubbed Esau's hairy arms to make sure he had the right son. Esau, he said, Bring me dinner, and I will bless you. Rebecca was listening. Jacob, she whispered, hurry, cover your arms with hairy goat skins to fool your father. Rebecca remembered that God said Jacob would make a better leader for the family than Esau. So Jacob dressed up like Esau and brought Isaac dinner. The plan worked. Jacob tricked Isaac into making him... <clears throat> the new leader of the family. It says here, how would you feel if you were tricked by your brother as Esau was? So, this, um, like I said, this is kind of a continuation of what we heard last week. Um, and it wasn't just Jacob this time, it was actually Rebecca who was also part of this big trick. Um, remember he put goat skins on and he brought Isaac a special meal. Um, and we, we learn just like last week that Rebecca and now Rebecca, last week it was just Jacob with the birthright, but now it's Rebecca and Jacob. Their actions were not okay. They actually told a lie. And although Jacob got the blessing he wanted, things would never be the same for his family. It actually caused quite a bit of arguing. And God still loved Rebecca and still loved Jacob. Um, but even though they experienced God's grace, their choices did have some consequences um, that they couldn't anticipate. And we're going to learn more about that. You'll hear more about that later. Um, but remember, nevertheless, even though it was messy, and it was supposed to go to Esau, but then Jacob stole it. God did have a plan for God's people. And God, again, we see in this story, God had a plan that this would be a great family through Abraham. And it's happening. It's happening now because Esau has a blessing. And I mean, I'm sorry, Esau got the blessing stolen and Jacob has the blessing. And through Jacob, there will be 12 sons and those will be the 12 tribes of Israel. And we know that God loves all of us. God loves all people children of God and um, we are part of God's family so God has a plan for us just like God has a plan for the had a plan for these people um, and you know as we learn in this story people don't always do what is right as we're seeing but God has mercy God has grace but there still may be consequences for what they did but God still does love and God keeps God's promises like we learned. And God keeps God's plans. Um, and God loves you. 
God makes promises to you, and God loves you even when you do wrong. So, um, just like when Jacob and Rebecca did something sneaky, they are still loved by God. So, let's do some um, activities that go with it. Now, the packet that goes with this is packet eight, and there are all sorts of activities you can do with it, coloring sheets and, and worksheets and things, and I know I handed all those out when we went on the trick-or-treat. So. There are all sorts of activities that go with that, so do packet eight. Um, let's do the sign language again. That's been fun. So here's the verse for the sign language. And remember, this sums up all these stories. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2. So I'll hold up the sign language instructions if you want to pause it on there for just a moment and then we'll do it together. So there are the sign language instructions. You can, if you're watching this, you can pause it and you can see what to do. Now, we'll do it together. Make you great nation blessing you all right so that's the sign language and that's been fun we've been doing that every week um and here's an activity you can do i want you to go into the kitchen and light er, you know turn the turn the gas on the stove on or the electric stove whatever with your parents help of course and put a tea kettle on with some water in and listen to it bubble up listen to what's happening and talk about what's happening to the liquid and the gas and how it's bubbling up and getting, there's more pressure building up in there. And why don't we talk about how maybe there was some anger bubbling up in this story. Did you see some pressure building just like that tea kettle? And think about that as it relates to the story, but also um, think about a time in your life when you felt some anger bubbling up in you, or maybe somebody bubbling up, you know, in your family or your friends, you've seen it kind of happen. So just talk about anger, how it can kind of, so there's some, you know, bubbling up in this story and we can talk about that, how that relates to our life. Um, and then one more thing is to get a box. Remember we did that sensory game a few weeks ago when Jacob and Esau were born. You have a box and you put a fuzzy thing and a smooth thing in the box and then go to somebody in your family and, um, Blindfold them, have them cover their eyes, and reach in the box and guess what is in the box. But now you can add, you can take those two items you did a couple weeks ago and add two more. So it's just kind of a fun game, because remember the, the hairy arms and the smooth arms, so you've got something fuzzy and something smooth. So, remember that God had plans for God's people. People don't always do what's right, God has mercy. There are consequences for what they will do, but God does have grace and mercy. And there are a lot of activities that can go with this, including your packet, we did the sign language, the tea kettle discussion, and the sensory box game where you reach in and try and figure something out. And so let's, we're gonna finish the lesson with that, but I wanted to read one more thing. Just stay right there with the camera, I'll be right back. Um, and I know that we're switching to distance learning soon in the Northfield schools, and I'm sure that's stressful for a number of people. Um, so I want to give a verse that I think may be comforting. Um, it says, Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Or No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of below can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is one of my favorite passages because I think it reminds us that we're always 
and the comfort of God. And now it's kind of a crazy time with everything that's going on. And so um, I just want you to think about this, that no matter what comes, God is with you. You are not separated from God. This is a hard time, I know. We're going back to distance learning and a lot of uncertainty. So just keep that in mind this week and as we go forward. So thank you so much for watching these posts. Let's, um, let's pray and we'll, we'll be done. Dear God, thank you so much for this time. We pray that your word may do your will. Whatever was spoken here, make it your will. And thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Good to see you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.